it's time for the next episode of Security 101. And this week, we're going to talk about drive-by downloads. And there's a lot to cover this week because it's not just, we've got to explain why drive-by downloads are so dangerous. And we've got to explain a little bit about some vulnerabilities that uh, we haven't explained before. So uh, I want to talk about vulnerabilities. First of all, I think I mentioned this in a, our first episode. A vulnerability is basically a bug in a program that uh, people find and exploit. And they use that bug to get into your machine to install other software, whether it be uh, malware that does nasty things or another piece of software who download, that downloads more malware, and it's called a dropper. Uh, but basically, as a people write programs, they can't find all the bugs. I mean, they try. They really do try. But they have people out there that are scrubbing through those programs of theirs trying to find the bugs that they can exploit. So that's a vulnerability. And every program has vulnerabilities. You're never going to find them all. Uh, it's just almost impossible. All over, over a long period of time, eventually, you'll probably get the bulk of them worked out. But that's what it is. Uh, that's what a vulnerability is. It's basically a bug. So there's really two types of vulnerabilities that I need to describe as well. There's a known vulnerability, which are things that somebody either has already exploited or somebody found and did the right thing and called the company or sent the email to the company and said, hey, you got a bug or here I can exploit. I can get into it. And then there's the ones you don't know. And the ones you don't know, you probably heard this term before, it's called a zero day. So that means that the manufacturer of the software does not know it. And at the internet, uh, in general, doesn't know it, with the exception of the person who found it. And what that person is going to do is they're going to sell it on an underground website for an amount of money, and people who are trying to exploit the malware are going to rent it or buy it from them, and they're going to distribute it. Well, when, we fir when it's first found, it's called a zero day because it's the first day that we've seen it. So that's what a zero day is, and there there's new ones coming up all the time. That's because this group of people are going through programs trying to find all these different um, bugs in programs. And it's something like Java that's still being updated. Like they went from version 6 to version 7. So it's a new version. They're going to potentially have more uh, bugs in their software. So they're constantly looking at it, which is what happened with the recent Java exploit of uh, 7.10. And now 7.11 is out that fixes that. 7.10, the vulnerability was so bad, they could actually take over your computer remotely. So uh, the US government recommended that you disable Java or take it or uninstall Java. And you know 7.11 came out, which fixed that vulnerability. So that was a zero day vulnerability because it was unknown. And uh, they took great advantage over that as well. So now we're going to explain drive-by downloading. So you have a, um, you're surfing the web, and you have something on your computer that's vulnerable. And if you haven't updated it, that's one of the risk of not updating, is you don't have the fix for, what, or the fixes that exist for these, um, the bugs or the malware or the vulnerabilities. So you go and you surf a site that has been hijacked, quietly hijacked, I want to say quietly because Unlike the old days of hacking when they put big manners up saying hacked by somebody when they just wanted fame, now they're high themselves. So they go out and they infect a the site. Site keeps working as normal, looks like normal, and functions as normal. But when you get there, they go to your machine and they go through, okay, he has this version of Java, he's okay. He has this version of Flash. Oh, that version of Flash has this vulnerability. Let's use that to install software. So that's called drive-by downloading. You basically go to a site and you get um, infected because you have something that's vulnerable. And these programs are very sophisticated. They will go through tons of different versions of software to figure out what you have that they can use to put their software on your machine. So that's why you need to keep updated. Again, I'm going to push through the whole thing. Keep updated on your software. But that's called a drive-by download. Now, to get you to the site, there's many ways they're doing that. Sometimes they'll put it on a very popular and active site, and that will start spreading as well. But that's typically not fast enough for them. So one of the things they'll typically install is a spam program. So when somebody gets infected, it comes, it downloads, it sends to all their friends, hey, go check out the site, and start sending out uh, links to the site. The other thing they can do is phishing emails. That's the recent phishing email with the tracking information from FedEx. It's taking you to sites, random sites all over the internet that are infected. When you go there, look at your tracking information, you get infected uh, right there by going to the site. So that's another form of phishing email as well. Once you become infected, you become part of this malware network as well, or potentially part of the malware network. They may install a spam program that when, as soon as you are infected, you start sending out mail on behalf of them. It could be your contacts or contacts that they have sent. You basically become a node in this command and control network that's spreading out this phishing email, getting people to go to this drive-by website. So it's very important, again, I'm going to push this really hard, is keep your things updated. Uh, don't click on links in email unless you know for sure uh, where it's going to go because those are the two things that are helping spread all this drive-by ma drive malware. And the other thing I also want to say is if you go to a site that looks suspicious and you think, I'm going to get off it before I get infected, by the time you see the site, you're already infected. You are infected within milliseconds of accessing that site. The, uh, the code that actually looks to see if what you're vulnerable for runs 
probably be in, in done executing before your web page even draws. And as far as the downloader goes, uh, it's going to be a really small file that will download more stuff in the background. So you, by the time you get to a site that's even questionable, you're already infected before you see it. So again, just want to explain a little bit what the drive-by uh, downloads were. We had some questions. Could we explain that in the first episode or talked about in the first episode and didn't really explain what it was because we're not really driving down the street or anything like that. It's basically, as you're surfing the web, you're just getting popped in and getting infected uh, from the vulnerabilities on your machine. That's it for Security 101 this week. Next week, we're going to talk about ransomware. Uh, you might not have heard of it, but it's becoming a very big problem. And uh, I've recently experienced a couple of things there where people actually continually paid money to ransom or to unransom their machine uh, and no success on that. So we're going to explain ransomware next week, something else to be careful of. All right, that's Security 101 for this week. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.